I believe that baseball just got out of their own version of a lockout. So fans of the MLB are going to get to see some games again in the near future. But one of my favorite sayings from baseball is swing and a miss. And that was the case with the Baltimore Ravens. And I'm sorry because so many Ravens fans feel like they have a knife in their gut and it's just getting twisted and turned all day in free agency because they see this guy gets signed and that guy gets signed and that guy gets signed and that guy gets signed. All the meanwhile, the Ravens have been quiet. But apparently, they have not been that quiet because they've been trying. And I know I already know what the comments is going to look like. They're going to be like, man, we hate hearing these stories where we hear that the Ravens tried, but they didn't succeed. And this is another one. Emmanuel Agba, he said that the Dolphins... They will benefit for him over the Bills, Colts, and the Ravens, and some other teams. So, the Ravens were interested in one, Emmanuel Agba. And, hey, maybe they offered a deal. Maybe they didn't. We may never know. Or, you know what? We'll probably find out eventually. We'll probably find out. But, I do like that the Ravens were trying to get somebody who could provide some interior pressure. Because that is one of the biggest things that they need right now on their defense because... They just haven't had that. That's been their biggest issue on defense, in my opinion. Obviously, besides health and all that. But when they got their guys healthy, that's their biggest issue, interior pressure. And when you look at his recent numbers, um, first, let's look at early on when he was with the Browns. Because Ravens, a little they're a little familiar with Emmanuel Ogba. But anyway, rookie year with the Browns got five and a half sacks. Uh, followed that up with four sacks. And in 2018, he got three sacks. So then he's like, all right, let me get out of Cleveland. He went to the Kansas City Chiefs. He ended up getting five and a half, five and a half sacks there in 2019. So I was like, ah, uh, yeah, that's, that's straight. So he's been consistent. He's been consistent, averaging about four and a half sacks a year. So I was like, all right, cool. So then he went to Miami. And when, when you go to Miami, it's, like, it's a different vibe in Miami. It's a much different vibe. It's a much different energy. It's just different. Much different. Like, and he got out of those cold climates like Cleveland? Ooh, freezing. Kansas City? Ooh, brr. But then he came down to Miami. And for the last two years, he has gotten nine sacks apiece. So the big consistent thing with him has been productivity. And the Ravens saw that. And they tried it. But they end up coming up short. Now, I know a lot of Ravens fans are going to be mad at this. But I'm honestly not. Reason being because they tried. They tried to upgrade the interior of the defensive line. He would definitely be an upgrade. He would definitely be an upgrade. He's a defensive end. He's somebody that you could just you can move around and whatnot. And the Ravens know that they have they had Calais Campbell. He's a free agent. I think he'll be back though. They had Brandon Williams. I don't think he'll be back. But they know that they have a need to provide some pressure. They have a need there, and they saw that need and they tried to address that need, but they end up not being. There. And I would not expect them to be able to compete. With the, the, what's it called? The Dolphins. When it came to signing a player? No. They're not going to be able to compete with them. Because Dolphins, they can offer something that Ravens cannot. And that's the weather. <laughs> but besides the weather, they can offer something that the Ravens cannot. And that is the money. Like some real significant money. Ravens just would not be able to go blow for blow with Miami when it came to that bread. So... I'm not mad at the Ravens. I understand people's frustration. They're like, oh, man, we got to hear about another story where the Ravens didn't get a player. And I know there have been so many of those stories. And there will be more. And a lot of Ravens fans have already braced themselves for those stories because they've already braced themselves for this part of free agency where we just don't hear anything from the Ravens. It's not surprising. And I can understand the frustration. And I ain't mad at the frustration at all. I get it. Trust me, I do. But this story is one that I don't feel like is necessarily a bad story. It's a frustrating because you always think about the what if. You always think about, oh, man, we could just, just imagine if we would have got that guy. Just imagine. And that's where it hurts the most because you imagine like, oh, man, what they could have done with our defense. And we'll be getting to see Emmanuel Ogba because we, uh, the, the Ravens played the Dolphins this year at M&T Bank this year, unfortunately. I wish that game would have been down here again. But it's okay. It's at M&T Bank Stadium. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. Um, so we'll see exactly how it goes. But shout out to the Ravens for trying. I mean, they, they failed, but I'm not mad that they went for it. Because that's what it's about. It's about going for it. Now, something that sticks out to me, Emmanuel Ogbo got a four-year, $65 million deal. 
<laughs> it's kind of a lot of money if you ask me. That's a lot of bread there. It's a whole lot of money. It seems as if if the Ravens were interested, maybe they are kind of getting out of their comfort zone. Because you think about this, like this is a player who is a productive player. He is a free agent. So he would have went against the compensatory pick formula. So he Ravens would have whatever comp pick they got, one of those comp picks would have canceled out because of them signing Emmanuel Agba. And you know how much they love their comp picks. But they were willing to go out of the norm. So maybe this is a sign of what's to come. Maybe this is a sign of the Ravens sort of stepping out of that comfort zone. This is why I'm not mad at it. So let's see what the follow-up is. Let's see what the follow-up is. Because this, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is just a start. Hopefully this is just the beginning. Hopefully this is not the end of the Ravens like really getting after it. This is something that they should have been doing for years with Lamar Jackson on his rookie deal. But they let, let, let's see how they do this year. Because again, this is the last year you have your quarterback on a rookie deal. This is it. No more after this. That's a wrap. And I mean, you could even say kind of right now that he's not even on his rookie deal. I mean, he's on his fifth year option, but that cap hit went from like 1.7, 1.2, 1.3, 1.7, da, 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 little stuff to 23 mil. <laughs> so, I mean, he technically is still on, still on his rookie deal, but yeah, it's a little different now. But I do, um, I love that they tried. I love that they tried. Um, again, not, not mad at that at all. Uh, and hopefully this can be a, uh, a pattern with them willing to try. And not only with them willing to try to get a player, but them willing to try to get a difference maker. That's one of the biggest things that stands out to me. They tried to get a difference maker. And get this too. Again, back to his bread. Uh, a four-year, $65 million deal. So when you break that down, of course, you know, they got guarantees and this and that and uh, all that stuff. But anyway, four years, 65 mil, that's 16.25 mil per, per. So even if Ravens had a deal that was slightly under that, it would still be significant money that they would have had to give to Emmanuel Agba. So this, he got 16.25 mil per, say for instance, Ravens offer 14 mil per, 15 mil per. That's still significant money into a player. That they would have had to give up. Because there's no way. I, I mean, I would hope not. I mean, you, sometimes you never know. But I would hope that they wouldn't approach him. Hey, Emmanuel Ogba, you're a free agent. Um, uh, nine mil a year. How's that sound? You Take it or leave it. I'm not even discussing that with you. So I, I would hope that the Ravens wouldn't. And I wouldn't think they would go that low. But whatever they offered, I'm sure it just, it was not this. But it had to be something that would still be significant enough to where they tried. And you're not going to try. Well, hopefully you, would, you wouldn't try with some foolish stuff. Hopefully you wouldn't try with some like super low ball offer. Like, I know they, they probably do some little low ball offers to outside free agents. But I, I would think it would be in this range. But anyway, didn't work. So doesn't matter, does it? Uh, but it's all good. So, again, we'll see. Uh, we'll keep looking out for these almost stories. We'll keep looking out for these. Oh, they tried. We'll keep looking out for it. But, again, with this one, I'm not mad. Just simply because of the fact that they did try for a good player, for a difference maker. Not just a body to fill a roster spot, but they tried to get a difference maker in an area that was very weak on their defense. Very weak. So... Let's hope it keeps going. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. I know it's been a lot of videos today. And it's probably going to be a lot more. We out.